Hello everybody, and today I'm going to talk about a very interesting GPU inside a very interesting computer I picked up recently. Now, the 90s were probably one of the last interesting eras in computing. While the 2000s featured the tech bubble bursting and the rise of smartphones, and the 2010s have been a social media dystopia with mass spying being normalized, computing advancement stagnating unless they have to do with spying on you or using you as a way of getting marketing data, and coordinated corporate censorship. Oh, oh wait, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I meant to say big companies exercising their private company rights in lockstep. The 90s had it all. Now, the 90s were a very interesting time in technology because that's when so much was advancing. That's when there was so much optimism. I mean, the like communism had just fallen, supposedly. And what happened was technology was advancing very, very quickly. I mean, if you compare the early 90s technology with late 90s technology, they're nothing alike. So much stuff changed from the beginning of the 90s to the end of the 90s. There was the space program. We were still launching people into space. We had these space stations and stuff. We, we had all this stuff back in the 90s. Hell, there was even lots of blind optimism, which led to stuff like the dot-com bubble or Intel's titanium processor. But there was so much optimism about the future in the 90s. It was just unreal. And this was as technology was advancing quickly. And meanwhile, the high end of the market in the 90s, that was truly interesting because the 90s were the last era of computing in which the high end was really unique cost is no object hardware with weird and interesting designs being churned out and there were some interesting systems made in the 90s especially in the workstation field now this era came to an abrupt halt when companies decided all at once all in lockstep that the future was homogeneous beige boxes with different coats of paint and this was reflected once companies rolled back their ambitions of replacing the PC with their own processor and operating system combo and decided they'd save money by building a PC with their brand on it instead. This mentality showed itself in three different ways in the high-end workstation industry. The first was that companies that built Unix workstations slowed down on hardware development, either fully like what happened with the companies that bet on Itanium or partially just on the workstation side, like with Sun or IBM. Companies continued to sell the same old system until they discontinued the whole line, or they'd make minor upgrades with off-the-shelf video cards or later CPUs from their server lines, for example. The second thing that happened is that HP and Intel decided to partner to make a new CPU called the Itanium that was supposed to be the next big thing. And the Itanium was going to be the CPU that would not only save money for HP because they wouldn't have to engineer a new PA RISC processor every time they wanted to compete, but the Itanium was also going to replace every CPU from the x86 CPUs used in your computer to high-end RISC processors used in all these workstations and servers, and it was going to replace all of them. And the thing with Itanium was, it was perhaps one of the biggest tech flops ever, and for a good reason. It was a CPU design that seemed nice on paper from the hype, but absolutely failed in the real world. It was hard to program, it, it didn't run very well, and yet before it came out it had this unreal level of hype, which everybody bought into like sheep from all these businesses, killing off several promising CPU architectures as everyone bought into it foolishly. HP and Compaq went all in, killing off their CPU lines and porting their operating systems to it. SGI also killed off their MIPS computers running IRIX in favor of Itanium powered Linux boxes, and even Dell and IBM built a few Itanium systems, and there was this whole plan to sort of port AIX to Itanium. But the third factor that killed off Unix workstations, the third one, was the rise of the PC. Now many Unix workstation vendors either built PCs as a plan B or as a replacement for their PC line as was the case with Intergraph who went from building Clipper workstations to building PCs. Now over time, this is what everybody ended up doing and for a good reason. As development costs increased, as Windows NT made Windows good enough for professional use, 
and as generic hardware got closer and closer to the good enough point, companies decided to start building cheaper, less profitable Intel-based systems instead. During the dawn of that time period though, before the rise of AMD64 and the consolidation of video card vendors, there were some interesting machines. This right here is an HP Visualize X class, which is essentially a specially branded HP Kayak workstation from the same era. It has a few nifty features the Kayaks had, such as a front panel display that can show postcodes as it's booting, along with its own self-diagnostics accessible from a front panel and a heavy, strong metal case. The system is branded HP Visualize and features the same color and paint scheme that the HP 9000 based Visualize machines had in an attempt to make these machines fit in with the pricier Unix workstations. For the most part, this is a dual slot 1 machine. It has the same box standard BIOS, it has the same dual Pentium 3 setup that a lot of systems had, and it takes regular ECC RAM. So, for the most part, it seems like it's just like your everyday old generic um, x86 machine, but in a nice case. But there's a twist, and that is inside the system. Once you take the side panel off, you'll notice that this system features a custom HP-designed Visualize FX6 Plus video card with an optional texture module installed. Now this is the real interesting part about this machine, and that is because this was the GPU used in the PA Risk based HP Visualize models. And this was actually the top end GPU you could get inside the PA Risk powered Visualize models. But this is modified for the PC platform. The GPU features AGP in its PC incarnation along with PCI. Yep, that's right, this GPU features a PCI connector and an AGP connector, and that's because the AGP card does not work in the BIOS. So a PCI Cirrus Logic video card has been grafted onto the card, and once the machine boots, it switches over. And to achieve this, the driver actually will disable the Cirrus Logic GPU, so you can only use the Visualize card. The Visualize FX6 GPU itself is an interesting beast. The GPU features a few PA Risk based microprocessors acting as the video card, 16 megs of texture RAM, and 18 megs of VRAM. Furthermore, there was a better texture module available that gave games higher frame rates when it was installed. Once you take a look at the GPU, you realize this is no ordinary GPU. This GPU, being a product of the waning days of the true cost is no object era, weighs a ton. Features numerous chips multiple high-quality PCBs with the HP logo silk screen to them, including the bolted-on PCI video card and texture module. And like a lot of nice higher-end video cards, it features a backing plate ensuring the GPU doesn't sag. You know, unlike that expensive GeForce or Radeon GPU that has a giant cooler and starts sagging when set up sideways. Then when the GPU fails, well, who cares? It wouldn't run Fortnite fast enough, so it's time to open up that wallet and get mom's credit card to replace your GPU. Oh, uh, whatever. Uh, I don't like those backing plates. It makes my GPU look worse. I'm, I don't care if it fails. I'm going to buy another one anyway. I'm rich. I'm a PC gamer. I'm rich. Because of the length of a video card, how many circuit boards are stacked, and the backing plate, the GPU is held in place with three screws. Two in the expansion card bracket area like any other GPU, and one all the way in the other side of the case. Once you lift this video card out, you can truly feel the weight of this GPU, especially if you didn't let it cool down like I did, allowing your hands to feel the burning heat of the HP Visualize GPU. If you want to get one of these GPUs without trying to find one of these HP Visualize workstations, it's fine. Just go on eBay and buy this GPU for around 20 bucks and hope that your system can handle it before some bigger YouTube channel finds out about it and it costs $100. Don't you love when your hobby goes from QUIT HOARDING ALL THAT JUNK BILLY YOU GOT TOO MANY OLD COMPUTERS GET RID OF SOME OF THEM DAMN IT to sorry pal 200 bucks for an old video card I just looked up on eBay no lowballers you're paying me 200 bucks and if you don't give me 200 bucks this is going to the scrapper. This GPU was designed as a workstation GPU and it shows in numerous ways. There is no direct 3D support whatsoever, and further adding to this is the lack of 16-bit color support, which causes problems with games that attempt to use it. 
This limits game support to only a handful of OpenGL games as numerous games use Direct3D instead, and many games that use software mode also used 16-bit colors only. When you run games on this GPU, the GPU seems to struggle with themes such as decals for blood and a few more things, but it runs Quake 3 at an okay frame rate if you turn off light maps and switch to vertex lighting. Otherwise, Quake 3 will run much, much worse, but it will look nicer. It runs well enough to rack up plenty of kills online, that's for sure. Quake 2 runs amazing, and you can turn up the resolution while Half-Life also runs quite well in this video card as well. However, only OpenGL games will run, and even software mode support is jimped because 16-bit color does not work. So you'll want to replace the GPU, except as you'll find out due to the server works chips that it'll be a pain, so you'll end up having to use a PCI video card instead of an AGP card once the gimmick of having a card that looks like a parody video card from some magazine years ago wears off. Time to get out mom's credit card again and spend money on a, another GPU. All in all, there's some novelty to running old games with a card that's hot enough to cook food on and consists of as many chips as an old arcade board's 3D chipset, but otherwise you'll get bored fast and want to use a faster GPU. It's a throwback to the time when tech was advancing rapidly when there was some weird over-the-top 90s tech that was just coming out all the time that you lusted after in computer magazines because it was actually interesting. And it's when you could use your GPUs to play intensive games. Not games like, my dad is a bitch, ugh, simulator 2018. I can't wait to use my RTX 2080 to play Night in the Woods. Oh yeah, I'm gonna buy a Night in the Woods official hat and shirt and the hat says crimes on it, and I'm gonna wear that when I'm shoplifting Copic markers from the local Walmart. Fuck capitalism, mom's credit card won't pay for markers. Thanks for watching, nerds. Subscribe for more tech videos, and this was me trying to see if I could make a more polished tech video. So, um, leave what you think in the comments, and have a wonderful day playing Quake 3 on your old, uh, computer.